So before we get started with the actual debate, here's some context. Um, I'm a student at Princeton University, and every year the Princeton Center for Jewish Life holds what is known as the Latka Hamantaschen debate, where two students and two professors are paired up with each other, and they debate whether the Jewish Latka or the Jewish Hamantaschen is the better Jewish cuisine. And honestly, I do not know why I was chosen for this debate. Like, no one ever looks at this and wonders what its opinion on Jewish cuisine is, but you know, that's how the world works. So this video is going to show my side of the debate. Here's what happened. Day. 
was February 21st, 2023. Time was 7.30 Eastern time. The location was Princeton Radiology, which is a few miles that way. Patient status going in was normal. He had a 106 over 84 um, blood pressure and his EEG result, the collector was on your brain, measured brain activity was 8.3 hertz, which is relatively normal for a person of his age. So first we showed him the Latka. Immediately upon putting him uh, inside this machine and showing him the image, we found that the subject's brain activity spiked drastically. And the orbital frontal cortex, also known as the pleasure center of the brain, it completely flooded with dopamine. He was really excited. Um, there was an increase in activity in the frontal lobe, which is responsible for critical thinking, decision making, which is what makes us think that people who have latkes are general, just smarter and uh, more intelligent people in general. And when we asked him uh, what he saw, he said, and I quote, I see a spiky pancake, it almost looks too good to eat, and I'm really craving applesauce for some reason. So we were like, that's great. We showed him other food items, it was going great, and then we decided to show him the hamantashen. The subject immediately entered a vegetable. He was unresponsive. This is not the time to laugh. His brain activity was minimal, vitals critical, and it appeared to be some kind of self defense mechanism meant to prevent him from uh, gazing into this terrible, terrible pastry. And when we asked him how he felt, because he was in a vegetable state, he didn't have much to tell us, which is a little unfortunate. So, because we are, I was part of a, a reputable study, we of course had um, monitors and recorders there to record what his observations verbatim. And so we have an audio recording of this as well, and I want to show you guys, and I remember this is one of the worst days in this individual's life, so I feel like you should treat it with the respect and care that it deserves. Okay. Okay, all items are normal. Prep the subject for image two. Okay, got it. Loading it up on the monitor. Yeah. All right, buddy. We're going to show you the second image. Okay. Actually, I actually have a lot down to this. <laughs> Ooh, are you sour Yes, we have all the food items available after the experiment for you to try. Show me the next picture. Okay. Greg, the next item we'll show you is called an Amintash. Stand by. One moment, and it's up. Sleep. You see, immediately following the experiment, the subject was exposed to the smell of a latka. Now, Dr. Abramson, who is Jewish, his mother was there, or his grandmother, and she had cooked some latka beforehand to share with the subject. And she placed the latka underneath the nose of the subject, and immediately his brain activity resumed. His vital signs were normal. He said, What happened? Am I alive? And he was. <laughs> so after this experiment, we decided to conduct a post-experiment interview. Talked to Craig, and we asked him what he saw when he saw the hamantashen, because that was when, well, you know what happened. He said, and I quote, when I saw the hamantashen, I heard a horrible, demonic voice in my, in my head. And it said, and actually I have a of this voice because of thanks to new audio technology, um, we're actually able to find what they sound like in the heads of people and I can find my phone. Oh, thank you. Okay. He 
said, I saw the world burn without a fire. People trembling under the horror of a triumphant pastry. And in the background was Fergie's rendition of the pastry. Then he blacked out. So after this incident, we wanted to analyze a little bit more about the hamantashen because clearly something was going on. And so we did some research, and we found that uh, the hamantashen was created um, according to Jewish culture, to celebrate uh, the death of the villain, Haman. And what Haman had basically done, done was he ordered the mass execution of Jews in Persia. And the Haman Tashin represents his ears or his hat for some reason. And this is true, I'm not, I am not making this up. <laughs> and we saw, after analyzing that, uh, this image, that it looked very familiar. <laughs> it's Fergie. <laughs> And in case you're not seeing the correlation, we prepared some slides for you where we impose the hamantashen upon your hand. You can see that it fits this exact shape. <laughs> um, so in case you worry about Craig, we got back to him after he woke up and we gave him a hamantashen, or not a hamantashen, we didn't want to kill him. We gave him a lot of and at the eating locker, he said, This is the best. Think I better eat. <laughs> so, as you all know, of course, after this experiment, the media was jumping all over this. They wanted to, uh, they really wanted to figure out for why this individual ended up going into a coma. And as you know, the Daily Princetonian covered it, saying PI experiment goes wrong, Jewish pastry <laughs> under investigation, but also more reputable sources, not reputable, that was an insult, more mainstream sources like the New York Times say Princeton research experiment goes awry. You study mental quantified relationship between food and hunger instead of almost a third of the tragedy. And even Fox News uh, got to jump at it. Walking us out of control. Man, I'm conscious about the world. The lock code induces high levels of pleasure in the orbital frontal cortex. Upon further analysis, we found that it resembles maternal bonding. <laughs> their baby for the first time, being flooded with a rush of endorphins, and that pales in comparison to when you hold up a latka for the first time. Subjects were left with good vibes and feeling slightly more Jewish. <laughs> and as for the hamantaschen, well, it induces comas, may also cause traumatic interactions with evil pastry deities. Now, Craig is a musician, and I'm trying to get a minor in musical theater, as you know, uh, their joy of education doesn't come with a major, it comes with a minor. And so, Craig was nice enough to write a song, I gave you guys a little peek at it at the beginning, and I am going to perform the song for you guys, and there is also part for audience participation. You don't have to participate, but you do. Okay? <clears throat> The vodka is better than the hamantaschen. It's a buttery object, small and warm. And when you put it in your mouth, you'll soon discover that it's the best Jewish cuisine, better than any other. <laughs> but some say that the hamantaschen is the better cuisine. They say it has a good shape. And it's a delicious pastry. What? <laughs> and to those individuals, I have one thing to say. Shut up and eat. Shut up and eat a latka. Or get the hell away. <laughs> so eat a latka. You'll like it a lot. Cause it tastes like your heaven. And it fills the stomach. You can eat it with sour cream. Or just have the sauce. So shut your mouth around a latka. It's all you should ever want. The latka is eaten during Hanukkah. It's a Jewish tradition. And just because it's simple in nature doesn't mean that it's not. It's part of Jewish culture, our collective hearts. But not the Hamatash, do you know where it came from? The triangle pastry is where shame should come from. This guy had comment, he supported genocide. Simply put, he was a terrible guy. And someone decided to eat his hat. You can't eat a hat, man, you can't digest that. The whole has won this debate. The Hamatash puts you in a coma state. If you want to 
about it? Ask my friend Craig. The hamantashu works, it'll ruin your day. There's another food that's tasty, you can't go without, so maybe you should do what I've talked about. So, eat a laka, shove it in your mouth, cause it tastes like your heaven. You know what it's all about. You can eat it with your family, or just by yourself. So, your mouth around the laka is better than anything else. Eat a So yeah, that's what I've been doing this entire time at school. I've only been debating Jewish cuisine and nothing else. Um, if you like this video, like, subscribe, do whatever. I, I don't really mind either way. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'll see you later. Bye.